Was Bobby Lee being picked on for being Asian in Hollywood? And is he a good representation for Asian guys in America? Let's talk about it. Yeah, all these debates sparked up again on the internet because Bobby Lee was just on Joe Rogan's podcast. Let's run some of the clips. Directors call me a pan-faced gook. What? Yeah, I had a director call me that once. Was he also? No, he was a white. What? Yeah. How long ago? In the 90s. One time I fucked up on a line mm. and he, he made the whole, uh, everyone, like the cameraman, everyone, and the wardrobe form a circle. They put me in the middle of the circle and he goes, point your finger. And they all pointed their finger at me and he goes, repeat after me, you're the worst actor on planet Earth. Oh my God. And they all did that and tears welled up in my eyes. And I remember a wardrobe lady looked at me and she goes, I'm so sorry. So I try to tilt every take, the light! The light! Right? And then, like, by the eighth one, he came from behind the thing, and he grabbed my face like this. He goes, here! Here! And, I, like, tears. Well, mm. well, no, don't feel bad for me. Poor I'm a survivor. You know That's I mean? your Holocaust. <laughs> that was your yeah, Auschwitz. Yeah, yeah, Being yeah. in a movie, and Michael Bay tells you to put your face towards the light. Yeah, boom! I mean... Listen, guys, Bobby Lee is talking about all these painful experiences that he went through, that he's sensitive to. Joe Rogan is partially empathizing, partially also criticizing Bobby Lee for being soft and sensitive. Um, they've been friends for decades, and we got to talk about it because the internet had a lot to say about it. So make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Also, check out Smala Sauce, which is almost sold out, smalasauce.com. Um, I'll say this, man. Uh, Bobby Lee and Joe Rogan, Andrew, have been friends for decades, and we just got to talk about how much he used to look like you. Oh, my gosh. You mean Bobby Lee? Bobby Lee Woo! used to, not Joe Rogan. Bobby Lee was a doppelganger for a chubby ninth grade you to a, a yeah. very crazy extent. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely if I was super chubby back in eighth grade, I, I kind of look like Bobby Lee. But I feel like now I don't look as much like Bobby Lee. I think I still have some of the same facial expressions like the... Could you be Bobby in between Bobby Lee and Steven Yoon, but I mean, maybe more towards Bobby Lee? That's funny. Um, yeah. I believe all his stories. I believe all his stories. However, I think for the people watching, they would have to decide like Joe Rogan how much they take his story seriously. Well, because a lot of what Bobby Lee, you either take what Bobby Lee says on a podcast as truth, as mostly truth, or you take it with a grain of salt and you're like, ah. He might be lying. He might be exaggerating because he's a comedian. And, and he's the, come out and said he's lied a lot. Yeah, for, and this is the weird thing about podcasts is that when it's a comedic podcast, it's not really a script. It's not a skit, but it's them telling a story. It's like bit doing bits on stage, except I feel like when you see somebody on stage, you more know that they might be exaggerating or making it up. There's but a presumption. A, but in a podcast, you're not sure whether it's made up or not. So you just kind of take yeah. it with a grain of salt. So what I'm saying is, I'm not saying Bobby Lee hasn't lied on a podcast before to get laughs. I'm just saying I believed his Hollywood stories. Right. I believe, I can believe this story because the director that he doesn't want to name, some people did some digging and think that it's this guy. Vince Offer. Who was the sham wow guy, but also he was a director for a lot of stuff too. And he also is kind of a crazy dude and he kind of got into some trouble himself. Like so drug addiction. He kind of got like canceled that. himself. So I don't doubt that he said those words because that's, but that's not what a usual director would say. Right, right, right. But um, I guess as Asians who have done some mainstream things, I will say this. I think that the way you can talk to Asians on set and really anybody has changed a lot in the past 10 years. Yeah, yeah. I, and, and I think that I'm not going to say that we experienced extreme disrespect, but I think that there was definitely some stuff that I felt like wouldn't have been said if we were a different race. Yeah, and not wouldn't be allowed in 2024 either. Yeah, definitely not in 2024, but I, I feel like that I give an excuse because everything is different since... Since 12 years ago. And I'll ago. tell you this. All Asian actors, especially Asian male actors, Asian females actors have stories too, but they're more like uh, usually on the sexual side in terms of like people trying to, you know, get things out of the, the Harvey Weinstein type stories. Asian guys have crazy stories and they will never say them on camera like Bobby was saying about being just disrespected though. Dude, I think Asian guys have tons of stories of being disrespected. 
Tons. Even a regular non-actor Asian guy has stories about being disrespected, uh, let even, alone guys in the Hollywood dude, system. Dude, even the coolest, best-looking Asian guys that I've ever met or I've heard from, they still have stories of being disrespected. I always think the system. funniest one is when Rain Andrew got mistaken for Ken Jong, and that was the moment that broke him and made him go back to Korea. It was Lee Hyun. Lee Hyun. Yeah. It was it, the other guy. It, it was the Terminator. Him. He, was still, like, he was like the Chad of all Chads of Korea. And when they thought he was Ken Jong, somebody that I'm sure in his Korean mind is like, there is no way I could be compared to him. And he got compared to him. It broke him. Yeah. Um, obviously, every single situation is different. I will say this. I think Bobby Lee, to answer your other question, Andrew, is he a good representation for Asian males in America? First of all, I think the easy answer is no, he's not. But I will say this, he's very talented and he's actually a very real representation of things I've seen Asian guys do to be successful that is like very unappealing to me. Mm, so you're saying there is a truth in Bobby Lee's character that sometimes, or at least at that time, it took that for a guy like him to be successful. And not that's to, Not just at that time, still to this day. Oh. Basically, there is a harsh reality, not the way we want things to be as Asian guys. Or not, I'm talking about the hardcore right. watch work mechanics of how society is for guys his age still to this day. Like you don't, you would never say that most guys aspire to be Bobby Lee, but a lot of Asian guys in that same position who want the same things might do some of the same things. Yes, if you are a schlubby looking guy, you're not that like hyper cool. I mean, even if you're hyper cool, you might have to downplay yourself to fit like just, it's almost like an NBA team. You want to be a scorer, right? Yeah. Like, uh, was it Kevin Looney, Kevon yeah. Looney? Udonis Haslam, they were yeah. scorers in college. How come when they got to the NBA, they just had to set screens and just take it all in the chest? No, it's, yeah. Not everybody can make that transition. Yeah. It, but, it's a but, sacrifice. But but do you think that that kind of attitude has to still be part of you in order for you to even pull it off? Yes. You have to be able to, and we'll get into the comments. You section. have to be able to sell out. Like you have to have the sellout yes. gene yes. to even sell out. And but just because you're a sellout doesn't mean you're not hyper talented as a sellout, but it just means that you have that muscle that allows you to sell out because some people mm. just can't do it mm. and as somebody said he loves when whites put him down he's a masochist mm. and then other people just said uh, i don't know it's just a style of humor like rodney dangerfield where he like you know makes himself the butt of the joke primarily right 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 i mean somebody just said i don't even care about asian american celebrities anymore because i just realized that all of them will sell out to come up i'll say this i don't think that he consciously thought about selling out to come up. A lot of these guys, when you meet them, because I've met so many people in the industry off camera, it's like that was just in them. Mm. It was in them to make those sacrifices necessary. No, to I mean, they probably growing up as kids, even in grade school to earn favors or be popular might have slightly sold out. And so it's in them, yeah. but they just do it on a larger scale in Hollywood for more success. Right. They're just, dude, you meet corporate sellouts in your day to day life that are not famous. That's true. They might as well just be a sellout and make millions of dollars. That's for true. It, right? People don't just sell out to Hollywood. Hollywood is front facing and, and, you know, very visible, but a lot of people sell out in the corporate world too. Somebody people were saying, you know, Joe Rogan clearly doesn't respect Bobby or he doesn't really like Bobby. I actually think that Joe Rogan and the more hyper-masculine, high testosterone comedians, they like Bobby, but they don't necessarily want to be like him at all. No, I don't think they see him as the same animal as them, but I do think that they are friends, but there are different yeah. and I, types of friends. But I think Joe Rogan d is Bobby Lee's friend. Yeah, I believe. And I think up. they enjoy talking to him because he's so different. Basically, somebody said, I've never seen an actor or a comic that is so openly demeaned and abused so much by countless amounts of other famous people. What is going on? How can that be his shtick? And then other people just said, yeah, but every group of friends in reality sometimes does have this guy in like high school, for example, turtle in um entourage mm. like they were saying that the reason it's not a enviable position but bobby is having a super real position it is a common trope to have a goofy friend that you rip on but in this world it happens to be the chubby asian guy even in uh every podcast that has like four or five people there's that guy in uh, i believe i want to say in nelk boys there's one of the guys that gets ripped on Constantly. Yeah, the shorter guy. He he uh got into some stuff with. But I'm saying he constantly is ished on. Yeah, and yeah. that's part of the shtick 
that makes that podcast appealing yeah, to a, a tough, certain yeah. demographic. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, you know, everybody was clowning him saying when he's like saying, I'm not a wimp dude, I'm a warrior. And everybody's like, man, I can feel Bobby's pain. I'll say this. Bobby is so good at showing like that hurt fifth grader that's inside of everybody. He's like never grown out of that persona. You know what I mean? It was even shown in, um, you know, that one old movie that where they used to find the dead body. What was that? No, the old movie that's really famous. Good old days, good times. Where the kids go on the search. Oh, yeah. You guys want to see it? Yeah, that's Wait, what I'm saying. Is that the hood one? Yeah. Oh. I don't anyway, know. what I'm saying is that those are all like childhood friend dynamics that everybody's hyper available with. And I feel like Bobby, he, he shows them almost to like a 12 out of 10 level. Yeah. And that's the humanistic like theater element. That's a good point. He's kind of like that fat friend who gets crapped on in the group and is the butt of the jokes, but he's just famous for doing it. Yes. Mm. Somebody just said, man, he has a lot of internalized issues and is a pathetic guy. I'm sure he sees himself as sad as pathetic too, but to be honest, he's got a lot out of it. Yeah. I'll say this. Listen, a lot of the world doesn't work the way we want it to work. Everybody mm. wants Bruce Lee's instead of Bobby Lee's. But right now, for the 40 year old up and up, uh, an up crowd, you got a Bobby Lee. It doesn't, I'm not taking away from his charisma. I'm not taking away from his talent. I'm not taking away He's from funny. his ability to storytell or make people laugh. It's far beyond my own. Like I can just see the muscles. If you, if you can read comedy muscles, regardless of how you feel about the comedy muscles, he got them. Shane Gillis got them. They got beastly comedic muscles, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying probably don't look to comedians who play themselves out that way for positive Asian male representation. Yeah, I think when you're looking at comedians for role models or positive representation, you have to understand that they are going to make the joke first and it's more for the laugh. But a lot of them still are very proud of what they do and hold themselves with respect. So I think you will look to them and you guys will analyze which ones you guys more look up to and you're going to base it off their jokes and what the message of the jokes is and what they're joking on. Because I'll tell you this, Bobby Lee does joke on himself a lot. He does get made fun of by he, other comedians a lot. He is the primary butt of the joke, let's be honest, is, analytically seven to eight out of ten times. Yes. Uh, especially if he's in the room, you can bet that he's getting made fun of. But I will say that he probably wouldn't accept it from other Asians. He just accepts it from non-Asians. Well, he accepts it from maybe higher ranking comedians. Yes. Um, of any kind, which yeah. is mostly non-Asian because he's right. pretty high up there. I'll say this. Um, I can appreciate how real he is to his character. Like I said, mm -hmm. I see Bobby Lee's all the time in my regular life that are not rich and famous off of it. So in a way, yeah. in a, on a personal level, I could still see why it's better. But yeah, ultimately, again, guys, so many pathways to success. What is success? Do you have any sort of responsibility to your group to represent the East in this way or that way? I think it's a lot of debates on the internet. But yeah, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time. Oh, I will say this. It's still better than being that fat kid who was picked on trying to be a beast when you get older. Like, at least he's real to himself in staying in that character versus, like, putting on a front that he's, like, switched over to be, like, a UFC fighter. Right, right, right. Which you see That's from fair. some comedians sometimes. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we're going to hop up, boys. We out. Peace. Peace.